Hi everyone and welcome to Be True, my podcast about the writing I love and the writing I do. And do you promise not to rhyme the whole time? I do. (laughs) I'm John Tessitore and today I have never been an outcast from my chapbook All the Lonely American Roads. You can find all the lonely American roads and all of my work at johntessitore.com. There are a lot of ways to introduce today's poem. I could say it's about life decisions and regrets. I could say it's about requirements of one's past, one's history. I could say it's about the dangers of conformity. But today, I'm interested in what may seem to be a more benign concept than any of those. Common sense. Common sense has many possible definitions. When Aristotle used the term, he meant the common perception created by the five senses working in unison, that is, the totality of our momentary experience. By the 16th century, common sense meant ordinary understanding, meaning held in common by everyone. And when Tom Paine popularized the term in his 1776 pamphlet Common Sense, published the year of American independence, he was trying to dismantle what would have been the ordinary understanding of his era by arguing for a new, better common sense. In that pamphlet, Paine argued, number one, that it made plain sense for the American colonies to govern themselves rather than a distant monarch. Number two, that democratic rule was simpler than the overcomplicated explanations and mental gymnastics required to justify the existence of a monarch. Number three, that common folk had the natural right to make their own decisions. And number four, that democracy made sense because it was based on the sense we all shared and held in common. That's a pretty good start. Common sense is logical, simple, natural, and unifying. But there's a weakness in this concept too, and a dangerous one. For example, what if things aren't simple? What if choices are hard? What use is common sense when things are complicated? Or, to look at it another way, what if your common sense and mine are opposed? What if you believe that land should be fenced and owned privately, and I believe that land and everything on it is a sacred gift? Not so common after all, right? And what if common sense is just fucking wrong? In America, we love an easy answer to every issue. We pride ourselves on straightforward, pragmatic decision-making. It's more of our good old-fashioned cowboy (laughs) horseshit. And we don't love the experts. The scientists and philosophers, the writers, the eggheads who complicate our lives with complicated details, even though those details have been the basis of our survival and livelihood since the beginning of time. When forced to choose between a trained expert and common sense, America loves to choose common sense. That is, we almost always prefer what we've been told by our communities, our families, our religious leaders. We turn local, anti-intellectual, parochial, simple. And social media has only encouraged us to get smaller and more narrow and dumber if we so choose. Just scroll back to the public debates during the pandemic and the conspiracies floated under the guise of common sense to see a bunch of idiots at work. (laughs) Now, the poem I'm going to read is not about that kind of common sense. It's way more personal and even autobiographical. It's about growing up believing in the common sense of the community that surrounded me my extended family most of all, and absorbing some idea about their ambitions for me and through me for themselves and trying to live up to their ideals. But it's also a case study in how common sense replicates itself for good or ill from one generation to the next. I have never been an outcast, not once. I always had a plan a duty to please as many people as I could within the narrow limits of what they understood. The lines unmentioned were obvious and never crossed. One does not confess to a bloodlust. One does not admit to a desire beyond common sense. One does not reject the American dream, whatever that is. The outcast is, by definition, reckless. And they worked too hard for waste, or so they thought. And so I thought too. Shoulder their guilt and go forth, young man. Build your castles from their sand. I worked harder than all of them.
a duty to please as many people as I could within the narrow limits of what they understood. That sounds like a noble cause. I thought it was a noble cause for a very long time. But what if they didn't understand very much at all? And they didn't. My family was wonderful in so many ways, but very, very myopic and local and focused on family most of all. Narrow. Which may be just right for some people, but it didn't suit me in the end. I have desires beyond common sense. And it doesn't suit society very well either. As new people and new ideas and new technologies start to infiltrate the community. When that starts to happen, a community built on a common sense turns into a community built on isolationism. Look around you folks. Isolationist common sense is everywhere you look. So someone like me, trying to please people who live within narrow limits starts to impose those limits upon himself, and if he's not temperamentally isolationist, he has no choice but to turn inward, to make himself small, by force if necessary, with really difficult consequences. <laughs> Believe me. And so, in the hope that you examine all forms of common sense and question its sources and make it justify its power over your life, and then be an outcast if you must... This is John Tessitore concluding another installment of Be True. If you've listened this long, thank you. You can find all of my work at johntessitore.com. But first, check out Tom Paine's Common Sense, the most successful patriot propaganda of its era, and still a pretty good prediction of everything positive and negative about America today. Special thanks to me for today's theme music, which I call F Chord. Maybe we'll talk again, and if you enjoyed this little podcast, leave some stars or a review and tell your friends. In the meantime, I gotta feed the dog. All right, Luna, I'm coming. I don't know what tune that was. Who cares? All right, Luna. <laughs>